Okay, I've been unable to get these run in a a uh, what you call it a uh, slideshow presentation thingy. So I've uh, I'm just going to run it off of uh, off of here. So it's not going to be the most uh, polished kind of uh, kind of deal, but uh, I think uh, I think this is going to work pretty well. Um, so uh, buckle up and let's see how this works. So I've got a couple of animations here. You can see one, two, three. Uh, although the dancing hair cell is not an animation, it is uh, actual uh, film footage, video footage. But for the uh, movement of the structures within the organ of Cordy, I've got this animation here that I can show you. So let me open this thing up here and, uh, you know, let's see, where's the, where's the full screen, dude? There we go. All right, so uh, yeah, this doesn't really look like much, does it? But it, it's actually a pretty decent animation. So let me just freeze it. And uh, that really didn't work well. Pause. There we go. That's better. Look at that. What a shot. Okay, so here we are. Uh, um, here we are looking at a cross section through the organ of Cordy. We would have the tectorial membrane right there, basilar membrane right there. Uh, three outer hair cells, one inner hair cell. Here are the stereocilia. And what we're going to really be interested in is the orientation of the stereocilia and these membranes to one another as the uh, fluids move through the system. Now we've got fluid up here, and we're going to think of this as the endolymph. And then we've got fluid down here, and we're going to think of this as the uh, paralymph. So this is the scala media up here, and this would be the scala tympani, and then of course up here someplace there'd be the scala vestibuli. Now, we're, we're kind of uh, putting the scala vestibuli and the scala media together, I guess, but that, that's not what's really critical. What's critical is that you recognize that this piston right here attached to this, whatever that would be if this was a piston, um, represents the oval window, and this uh, uh, space down here represents the round window. So what we're going to see is that if we push in here, we're going to push out there. So let's see if I can capture it. Uh, that's the other way. That's the other way. Come on now. There we go. So now you see we've pushed in here and we've pushed out there. So in other words, the stapes footplate goes in at the oval window and when that happens, the uh, round window bulges back outward. So you want to compare these two positions to the resting position, which would have been kind of parallel to that line, right? So pushing in there results in pushing out there. And that's resting position. And you can see now that if we are going out at the oval window, we're going in at the round window. So this is what would happen during the rarefaction phase of a waveform, where the air pressure momentarily is actually lower than it would be uh, at the eardrum versus uh, atmospheric pressure. The eardrum bulges out, the ossicles go with it, the stapes footplate is part of the acicular chain, and it comes out to during the rarefaction phase. The stapes footplate is driven in because the air pressure just outside the eardrum is higher and the round window would also be driven out. So the stapes footplate moves in the same direction always with the eardrum, and the round window is always moving in the opposite direction. That's another way to think about it. Okay, so now what we have to take a look at is how the uh, membranes also move in relation to the movement of these uh, of the stapes footplate and the eardrum, etc. So as you would expect, when the um, stapes footplate is driven in, we would anticipate that that would drive the basilar membrane downward, whereas if the stapes <coughs> footplate is pulled outward, that should pull the um, basilar membrane up. So let's uh, see if I can uh, get you to see that. Now, what you're going to have to look at is you know, you're going to have to have some kind of reference. And I, if I was in a classroom right now, I would draw on a board with a, with a marker to show exactly where that line is. There might be some way I can do that in Camtasia. 
uh, where which is what I'm using to record this if so maybe that's something I'll figure out later on or for next year or who knows uh, but right now just kind of picture this in relation to where it says fluid and what you'll see is that this thing is going to move down when the stapes foot plate goes in and up when the stapes foot plate comes out so let's see if I can capture that so here we are moved out and you can see how yeah this has come up quite a bit compared to where we would have been before and actually just kind of look at where it says fluid in relation to the uh, movement of that membrane right now the other thing you see when we let it go at regular speed here <clears throat> is how these stereocilia move back and forth also so when the uh, structure is pushed downward these stereocilia get pushed in this direction over here. When this moves up, the stereocilia get pulled back in this direction here. Stria vascularis would be over here, right? You know that because there's three outer hair cells. The medialis would be over here. You know that because there's only one inner hair cell. So if I freeze this where the uh, basal membrane is pulled upward the most, you see how everything is deflect how the stereocilia are deflected toward the stria if I can get it uh, there we go when the stapes foot plate is pushed all the way in you see how these stereocilia now are deflected more toward the medialis basal membrane is down closest to where it says fluid and these things are being pulled toward the medialis, toward the center axis. So I, I might have misspoke a moment ago. I want to make sure I got this just right for you. Stapes foot plate in, basilar membrane down, stereocilia sheared toward the medialis, toward the center axis of the cochlea. Stapes foot plate pushed out, basilar membrane up, stereocilia pushed toward the stria out in this direction the reason uh, that I want to make a big point out of this is as we will see in the next uh, lecture where we talk about the auditory nerve it's going to be movement uh, the the um, movement of the stereocilia is going to dictate the flow of ions and eventually the stimulation of the nerve fibers in fact we can look more closely now at the movement of these stereocilia because that's really the most important thing that's going to happen here uh, in the sense of the transduction process so what we're going to do now is focus in on the stereocilia and see how it is they are moved during these different phases of a waveform or during different uh, locations of the stapes foot plate in and out of the oval window so let me get out of here and let me go to the next slide which is the tip link slide so what we're going to look at here uh, and again let me kind of make this thing a little bit larger here we're going to go full size there so now let me just pause this um, now what we're looking at are the actual gates themselves so recall on the last uh, diagram the stereocilia and and let me actually back up momentarily here because um, you'll see why in just a second so now if I go back here, back here, apologize for all this kind of jumping around. Um, go back to that. See how the stereocilia are arranged such that the tallest stereocilia, the tallest hair, is <clears throat> on the side of the organ facing the stria. And you can see this. Right there, see there's the tallest stereocilia, then the next, the next, the next, the next, the next. And the tallest ones face the stria. The shortest ones face the medialis. So now let's go to the next slide. Uh, this one. And now we're going to see the same idea here. Whoops. There we go. And we got our full screen. And uh, now we're going to say tallest stereocilia so the stria must be over here shortest the medialis must be over here now what we're looking at are the actual gates themselves and these little uh, coiled up things are they, they represent springs if you will or links between the actual tips of these 
stereocilia, the tips of the ha individual hairs, to each other. So they're all attached together. So when one moves, uh, the odds are they're all going to move with it, and this tallest one is typically going to drive the process. Now, in fact, we don't know if these gates uh, look like this. These You'll see when these move, they're kind of like manhole covers. Uh, the gating mechanism may also be located down there. It may be on the sides of these stereocilia. Who cares, really? The, the point is, for us, there is some way for the ions, the potassium ions from up here, scala media, to flow into these uh, sensory cells through these channels. And the gates are going to either be closed, as they are right here, or, 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 come on now, there we go or open, like we see a few of them are here. Um, again, what we now need to see is that deflection of the stereocilia toward the stria is what's going to seem to open the gates. Deflection of the stereocilia toward the modialis is what's going to close the gates. So let's just kind of let it run. And I want you to keep your eyes on these gates opening and closing. And you can see they tend to be more open when things are moving in this direction rather than that direction. So let's see if I can capture it a few times here. All right, so now we're, we're uh, in a position that's almost halfway between open and closed. And you see just a couple of the gates are open. Same deal there, same deal there. All right, now you see we're deflected more toward this direction. In other words, this guy here is not straight up and down anymore. Uh, it's tilting in this direction, and we see that more of the gates are open. Now, ah, I caught it that time, didn't I? Now you can really see how this one is sheared or bent toward the stria, and all of the gates are open. So now when the cell, when the uh, uh, stereocilia, when the hair cell is activated like this, the flow of ions through those channels will be at a maximum, and it is going to be during this condition, especially where the probability of activating a nerve fiber, uh, the probability of, of uh, stimulating that hair cell is at a maximum. So you can see all the gates are open when we have bent this stereocilium all the way toward the uh, stria. And again, you are deflected toward the stria, if you're a stereocilia, you're deflected toward the stria when the basilar membrane is being pulled upward as during a, a time period when the stapes foot plate is being pulled out of the oval window, as would occur during the rarefaction phase of a waveform. Just the opposite occurs during the condensation phase of the waveform. Come on. Here, as would occur during the condensation phase of the waveform, you see how this is deflected toward the modialis, and as that happens, more of these gates are closed than they would have been otherwise. And again, as this occurs during the condensation phase of the waveform, the stapes foot plate would be getting driven in, and the round window would be getting driven out. Now, to me, this is kind of counterintuitive. This is not the way you would think it would happen. You would think that the high pressure area uh, of the uh, sound being propagated through the atmosphere associated with the condensation phase that pushes in on the eardrum and pushes in on the stapes foot plate would be that part that that moment in time would be that part of the transduction process where actually more energy more of the ions that are going to cause the transduction to occur would be flowing in fact it's just the opposite the nerve activity that results from sound active sound pressure in the environment occurs during the rarefaction phase when the eardrum is actually getting sucked out and the stapes foot plate is actually getting sucked out relative to where it would be at rest. So to me, that's kind of the opposite of the way that you would think it would go, but that's the way it goes. And I encourage you to recognize this as being one of those instances where the way you might think it would go is not the way it goes. It's just the opposite. So again, 
the back and forth motion opening and closing the gates. I'm going to try to catch it at the ultimate condensation phase here. Got it. Look at that. So now all the gates are closed. This is being pulled furthest toward the medialis, furthest away from its resting position of straight up and down. And now you see how little opportunity there would be for the charged particles to flow through the stereocilia into the hair cells, thereby producing, uh, thereby changing the chemistry inside the hair cell and as a result producing nerve impulses. Again, we'll look at that process of producing nerve impulses uh, more in the next lecture. Let's see if I can catch this now straight up and down. Close, just about got it. Um, again, you can see that the further this gets toward resting position straight up and down, you do start to get the gate, gates opening again. Right, and the further toward the stria it is, the more the gates are opened. All right. I think uh, what we're going to need to do <clears throat> is to have a study section for this. And I'm going to try to arrange it uh, pretty much the same way that Ms. N did when she organized them. Because I think that if you can kind of watch this and get the description <clears throat> and ask questions at that moment, that's probably the best way to do it. Okay, I did have one more, uh, uh, one more uh, thing for you to look at here. And this is the so-called dancing hair cell. And what you see here with the dancing hair cell, let me pause this for just a second. What we're going to see here is, again the electromotility of the of an outer hair cell so uh, just like we saw in that image in the previous um, uh, the previous lecture where there was that hair cell kind of moving back and forth and it had been stuck by an electrode here we've got the same thing happening there's an electrode stuck into this outer hair cell but what we're going to see now is how if you um, play a sound uh, the you know and and convert it into electricity just like a microphone would do and then play it through this electrode so you're essentially delivering a sound or what we'll see here is music uh, being delivered electronically to this hair cell wouldn't it be cool if this hair cell actually got longer and shorter uh, in relation to different aspects of that sound so specifically if there was uh, if the sound increased, it would be interesting if the hair cell changed its shape, whereas if the sound didn't change much, it didn't change its shape. So that's what we're going to look at here, and hopefully the sound will come through on your recording. If it doesn't, it's uh, Bill Haley and the Comets doing Rock Around the Clock, and the hair cell moves in time with the music. So let's see if this works. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. But it's glad right so join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock till broad daylight. We're gonna rock, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Yeah, now that is one one monster hair cell i would say but uh, what you saw and i'll i'll let's let's play it again here because it is just so cool uh what you're seeing is the hair cell moving in time one two with the music, three o'clock four o'clock rock five six it's seven like o'clock eight o'clock rock Nine, ten, eleven o'clock twelve o'clock rock and that's because the rock. electrical Around signal that it's receiving of course is being right, much right, right, it's changing right, over time so the, when the music actually comes up, gets louder momentarily, the hair cell gets shorter. When it quiets down, it gets longer. So this is a hair cell that's actually displaying what's known as electromotility. That is to say, the movement. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock. The movement that is being driven by an electrical current electromotility so if and the way that it works is that as the sound level comes up the hair cell gets shorter now again imagine that the stereocilia of this hair cell would be embedded in the tectorial membrane so that when a sound occurs and the hair cell gets shorter it pulls down on the tectorial membrane thereby increasing the stimulability if you will of those inner hair cells and it is through this electromotility that the outer hair cells actually increase the sensitivity of the cochlea. 
So uh, I encourage you to check this animation out on your own if you can. Show it to all your friends. It is uh, pretty cool. It actually dates back to the mid-1980s when I understand that um, most of you weren't alive yet. Uh, so uh, what we'll do next time is to go through <clears throat> the sort of the nerve uh, the, the implications for activating nerve fibers from the, these uh, animations that we've just taken a look at. And again, those animations would be the uh, hydraulic uh, piston-like response uh, of the stapes foot plate and how that drives the movement in the organ of Cordy, how that movement drives the tip links back and forth, and then also a nice example of that bi-directional coupling of the outer hair cells.